Suppose you're planning a cross-country trip and you want to know how much you're going to pay for gas. So you collect a sample of gas prices at 12 points along your planned route. Now the problem is you don't know exactly where you're going to stop for gas, so you don't know exactly what you're going to pay. But using these 12 observations, we can build a confidence interval that tells us a range of prices that you're likely to pay. We can produce two types of confidence intervals here. One is a confidence interval for the price of gas at a single gas station. The other is a confidence interval for the average price of gas at all the gas stations you stop at. A confidence interval is the sample measure plus or minus the standard error of the measure multiplied by some critical value. In this case, our sample measure is the average of the 12 prices that we observed, or $3.83. Now the standard error of the measure depends on whether we're building a confidence interval for the price of gas at a single station or a confidence interval for the average price of gas at a set of 12 stations. If we're building a confidence interval for the price of gas at a single gas station, then the standard error of the measure is simply the standard deviation of the observations we have, in this case 0.085. If, however, we're building a confidence interval for the average price of gas over 12 stations, then the standard error of the measure is the standard deviation of our observations, 0.085, divided by the square root of the number of observations. This gives us 0.025. The critical value depends on the degree of confidence we want. Suppose we want 95% confidence. and we look at a t-distribution with 11 degrees of freedom, we use 11 degrees of freedom regardless of whether we're building a confidence interval for a single gas station or a confidence interval for the average of a bunch of gas stations. The reason we use 11 degrees of freedom is because everything we're going to do is based on our sample of 12 observations. We have 12 observations in the sample, therefore our degrees of freedom are 12 minus 1 or 11. So using the T11 distribution, we have a critical value of 2.101. So we now have all the ingredients for the confidence interval. We have our sample measure of 3.83, we have the critical value of 2.101, and we have the standard error of the measure, either 0.085 if we're building a confidence interval for the price of gas at a single gas station, or 0.025 if we're building a confidence interval for the average price of gas over 12 gas stations. Putting these together gives us these two confidence intervals. So we can say we are 95% certain that the price of gas at a single gas station is between $3.64 and $4.02, and we're 95 percent certain that the average price of gas over 12 gas stations is between $3.77 and $3.89. So the question is, why are these two confidence intervals different? And notice that the confidence interval for the average price of gas over 12 gas stations is tighter than the confidence interval for the price of gas at a single gas station. The reason for this is when you go to 12 gas stations, some of the prices will be higher, some will be lower, and the high prices will will tend to counteract the low prices so that when you average them out, then you find that the average price exists within a tighter confidence interval than does the price of gas at any single station. So the question is, how do you know which of these two confidence intervals to use? To answer that, you need to know, are you asking a question about a single observation, or are you asking a question about the average of a set of observations? For example, if you're asking a question about a single observation, then you're asking questions like, what is the price of gas at the next gas station? Or what is the return on a stock tomorrow? Or what is the grade that you'll get on the next test you take? These are all questions about single observations. If you're asking a question about the average of a set of observations, then you're asking questions like, what is the average price of gas over all gas stations in the state? Or what is the average daily return on a stock over many days? Or what is the daily return on a portfolio of many stocks? Or what is your average grade in a course after you have taken many tests? 